Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about phishing, what it is, and how you can guard against this thing. So, uh, so phishing is where an attacker is going to send an email to a victim and try to get them to open a link or open an attachment, that kind of thing. So just a quick uh, maybe picture of what's going on here. Uh, you'll have some attacker bad guy out there that sends an email to a victim, all right? So here's the target uh, victim. So here's you know an email that comes in to a victim's email account, right? Um, there's a couple of different types of phishing. Uh, one is just phishing in general, and that's where the attacker will send maybe this really, uh, maybe a more vague email to just a huge group of people. Uh, think of this if you're talking about actual phishing, uh, as maybe like casting a net out out into the you know into the water, the way the I guess the way they used to do way back in the old days, or maybe still do now, and they're just going to try to get as many people as they can, you know, uh, or fish in that case. Um, so that's just kind of gen the generic phishing. And then there's a thing called spear phishing, where the, the attacker will create a very specific email that is uh, intended for a very specific victim. Maybe they've gotten some specific personal information off of social media. You know, they've, they've uh, stalked their Facebook page or their Inst Instagram account or whatever. And then they found out, hey, this person has this stuff, this specific information, and I'm going to craft this email to send directly to them so it makes it more believable. So that's spear phishing. Uh, there's also this whole idea, we won't get in, into this really, but there's this idea of catfishing, and that's where you create these online personas to try to impersonate someone that you're not, to try to either get someone to like you or whatever, but sometimes you can do that to try to get them to share information. So that's also kind of a business problem, or it certainly can be. All right, but the way that this typically works is, let's say the attacker owns some website, and we'll call it, um, you know, bad site dot com, right? And ultimately the attacker wants to get the victim to click on a link or maybe open an attachment so that the victim will visit this site right here. And this site, you know, the, the code and the programming and all that, that that constitutes the site that makes up this site is probably nefarious in nature. It's, it's got some kind of bad stuff that is going to steal information or you know, load up malware or something like that. So if the attacker can get the victim to click on a link that will bring that victim to this site, that's what the attacker's trying to do. Um, so most of the time, the email will include a link um, and it'll be, you know, link.com is what it'll look like, let's say, in the body of the email. And so it's gonna be, you know, HTTPS www.link.com, let's say. The problem, though, is that whenever you say, whenever it says link.com, let's say, in the email itself, that could be what appears in the email as the text in the email, but the link itself, the hyperlink itself, is going to be directed back to badsite.com. And a lot of times, a lot of email programs, you can just like hover over with your mouse without clicking on the link, and it'll pop up a little window that shows you the actual address, the actual location that that link is going to take you to. And in these bad cases, the actual location is going to be much different than what the text in the email shows. So that's one way you can kind of check before you click. Um, so maybe it says link.com, but ultimately it's going to bring you back here to the bad site. And we have found, by the way, F5, our, uh, our F5 Labs threat research uh, group has done a lot of great work on this phishing stuff. And they have found that it's three times more likely, so I'll just put a little 3x, Three times more likely that a spear that a phishing email, whether it's spear or regular phishing, is going to include a link in the email um, as opposed to, and I'll put the other thing over here, an attachment, which is the other uh, you know type of malware or you know uh, the bait, as it were, that the attacker is trying to get the victim to open up. So you'll either have a bad attachment or an attachment that's got bad stuff in it, or you'll have a link. But like I said, three times. Uh, you know, more prevalent are the links than the attachments. Uh, typically what happens on an attachment is if the attacker can get the victim to click on the attachment and open it up, um, a lot of times it'll actually open up, maybe it's a Word file or a PDF or something like that, and it'll actually open something up, but, it, but behind the scenes it's got some kind of malware that's, that's working as well, and that malware typically will call back to the attacker and say, hey attacker, I'm in, we own this guy's machine, now we can start stealing data and all kinds of different stuff. So anyway, 
So that's the essence of the, uh, you know, of the, of the, of the fishing, the spear fishing problem. Um, <clears throat> again, our, our F5 labs team has done a lot of great work. They found uh, that in 2019 alone, and this, is, this goes back years and years, uh, but in 2019 alone, over 21% of all data breaches, period, were the result of phishing uh, attacks. So this is still a big problem right now. Um, phishing has been going on for, man, as long as email's been around, over 25 years. Uh, the reason that it's still around and it's still so prevalent is because it's easy for the attacker and it works. Uh, if you can think about it, you know, if an attacker sends a thousand emails out uh, and only gets, you know, two or three responses even, whatever, then they've gotten responses and then now, now they can get in. It's kind of a numbers game. Um, and it's not that hard for them to generate these different emails. Uh, we looked at some statistics on industries. Uh, not all industries are, um, are attacked the same. Uh, so a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the data that our team found is that the financial industry is attacked a lot, uh, the healthcare industry is attacked, education industry, the nonprofit industry, and then also the accounting um, industry. So those are the top five. Not saying that if you're not in one of those, you're gonna, you're gonna you know, not get attacked, but if you're in one of those five, then chances are you're gonna get spearfished um, you know, a lot. So, uh, so maybe keep an eye out for this stuff. Some things that you can do to guard against this is number one, train your employees. Obviously, it's always a good idea to tell employees, hey, don't click on malicious links or try to figure out if it's a malicious link or not or whatever. Uh, don't open an attachment that you don't know who sent it, that kind of thing. There's also a few other things that I'll put up here and I'll just mention really quick. Multi-factor authentication is a good idea to, to introduce into your environment for a whole host of reasons, but that's a good one. Um, I'll put a uh, label um, external email. So label external emails is, uh, is a good thing. So, you know, if it comes from some domain outside of your own email, uh, then you can just say, you know, external source or, you know, uh, social or you know, whatever. There's a lot of different uh, tools that you can use to label these external emails. Uh, use antivirus software on your user's machine. So that's a good idea. Uh, inspect traffic. So I'll just put this right here. Inspect your traffic. A lot of times um, attackers will use um, encryption. Uh, in fact, even these bad sites that they, that they own that they're trying to get people to come back to, uh, these are HTTPS encrypted, signed by, you know, legitimate certi certificate authority, um, you know, certs that they've gone out to get. So everything looks legitimate here. Uh, so you can't necessarily just trust, you know, the, the initial, hey, this is, a, this is a, a good certificate back to this site, or hey, it's, it's encrypted, so I just kind of trust it. Don't do that. You need to inspect traffic, especially encrypted traffic, uh, which, by the way, F5 has a lot of great tools to be able to do that. Um, and then the, uh, the other thing that I'll put is easy reporting. So I'll put easy uh, reporting, reporting, goodness. Um, and that basically this is a way that if and when your employees get some kind of a, a uh, you know, phishing attack, then you need to have some kind of a process, some kind of a system in place that allows them to report back to, you know, the IT department or their manager or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, uh, so make sure you have that. Um, the chances are if one person got phished and then they report it back, that phishing email is probably also all over other people in your organization. So you're going to want to know about that. So again, phishing is a big problem. We've got some great ways to handle this stuff. Um, and so you need to be thinking about this. You need to stay, need to, uh, to stay safe out there in the, uh, the world that we live in today. So hey, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.